Hey guys, and welcome, finally, to a new Let's Play. This game has been sent to me by my uh, good friend, Jimmy Fails, and it is a spiritual successor to the Clock Tower games. Now, there's a lot of controversy around this game. Uh, I didn't even realize it came out myself. Uh, apparently, it came out eight years ago. Oh, my. Um, <laughs> to pretty uh, lackluster reviews, should we say. I think the average review score for this game is like two out of ten. So this was a uh, dream project of the original creator of Clock Tower. It was kickstarted back in 2014, I believe. And there was a lot of problems with the Kickstarter itself, including uh, not meeting the demands, versions of the game that were promised, which were never delivered, and the game just essentially being a big old bag of unoptimized dog shit. But I thought this would be a fun game to, uh, you know, bring to the channel, uh, especially as it was so generously gifted to me uh, by my friend. Now, I've watched several reviews of this game uh, and they essentially beg you not to support this game because of the terrible practices, such as missed, um, you know, promises, missed versions and all the stuff I've just said. But we're going to play the game. I've played roughly the first 30 minutes of this game. And they're not kidding. This game is so bad that it even took me by surprise. Uh, now, I am a fan of the first two Clock Tower games, uh, as in the original Super Nintendo one and the original PlayStation one. The third game, or the second game, depending on where you are, Ghost Head, uh, not so much. That game was trash, and <laughs> I think this game uh, is going to be trading blows with Ghost Head. So, originally this game was announced as Project Scissors, and was planned to be released uh, for iOS and Android devices, so Apple and Android phones. That version which was the, uh, those two versions, which were the only two versions originally announced. Yeah, they never made it. Ten years later, we still don't have those. Uh, later, they did add stretch goals to have it ported to the PlayStation Vita and the uh, PC. PC version came out, barely runs, and the PlayStation Vita version is even worse. Barely runs, unoptimized mess. So interesting facts about the development team. Uh, it is the original, a lot of the original Clock Tower staff, as I, I mentioned, including the director. Uh, but it also had some other interesting names. Uh, the designer of Pyramid Head, for instance, from Silent Hill. Uh, he was actually involved in designing the main antagonist of this game. And during the development information and videos, was quite proud of this uh, menace, including saying it might be one of his best creatures he's created so far. I don't know if he had a particularly nasty car accident or if he was involved in some kind of hallucinogenics at the time, because I'm not seeing it myself. But hey, who am I to uh, argue with the designer? So, they also had the director of The Grudge Films, which is interesting. And the music was also created by some notable people as well, including people that I believe worked on Silent Hill and other games. The music, to be fair, from what I've listened to, is okay. It's not bad, you know. Uh, the only problem with it is it's buggy, it cuts out, it ends abruptly, and the sound mixing in general is awful. Now, this game has a wonderful litany of technical problems. The game crashes, things don't work, the controls barely operate, it has incredibly poor 
visuals, including for the time. Uh, even by the standards of the Clock Tower games, uh, you know, which came out 20 years prior, almost. They uh, outshine this considerably. So, as I touched on as well, the Kickstarter backlash. Some of the backers of the game's Kickstarter campaign felt that the final product did not live up to the promises made during the funding phase. They felt that the budget was not well managed, leading to a product that didn't meet expectations. This game raised $300,000, right? Now, that's not a massive sum when it comes to gameplay, uh, uh, game development these days, of course. We all know this. But it should have been plenty to produce a well-made, highly focused game. Considering there was a lot of indie games. Uh, over the last decade that have come out with a fraction of that budget and much smaller team that have been superior. Five Nights at Freddy's, for instance. Not my sort of game. I don't, I'm not interested. But you can't argue that the game is solid, right? It's popular for a reason, okay? Uh, Undertale. Is it Undertale? That other really popular 2D uh, horror-esque RPG? That was made by one person had a budget of around thirty to $50,000 and was a huge success. So it's interesting that this game has uh, quite the pedigree developer behind it and fell completely flat on its face. So, I think it's about time we dive in and take a look for ourselves. Yes, let's go. Okay, so we're going to be playing this at 1080p in the beautiful graphic settings, which, uh, well, we're all going to enjoy the irony of that. We are still at 1080p at the moment. Uh, hopefully, by next week, we will be uh, playing in 4K. But, yeah, 1080 for now. Published by Playism. Well... Okay. And the company that actually developed this game is called Nude Maker, which is a terrible name. Now, um, it's also worth... Jesus, that's blowing my head off. It's also worth noting that uh, this game was billed as a traditional, ultimate Japanese horror experience. Now, I don't really know what that means. To me, that uh, makes me think of things like The Ring, The Grudge, um, uh, get, things like that. Yeah, that, that's not this. Uh, I don't know what this is, but whatever. Anyway, new game. There's eight endings for this game as well. Yeah, it's a lot. August 18th, 2016. Beautiful, huh? It seems you've had one too many drinks. Can I get you some water, ma'am? Huh? Oh, I'm fine. I just need some air. I see. Let me know if there's anything you need. <laughs> yeah, I will. So here's the controls. Be very familiar if you've played the Clock Tower games. So it is a point and click adventure. And there really isn't that much to it. Uh, another thing to mention before we get into this game. This game has multiple moon logic scenarios that will get you into a dead end game over ending. These are really obscure. But luckily, we're going to be heading for the best ending, um, hopefully. Are we going to get all the endings? I don't know. I don't know how much of this game that I can play. But we're certainly at least going to get the good ending. All right. So we can skip event with the space bar. We're playing as Monica. We know this because we saw the subtitles. Monica, Monica has a comical run animation. 
I'm not really sure where the horror uh, <laughs> is when you've got a cartoon character that's running like that. But, you know, we're, we're going to roll with it. She looks like she's about to trip over at any uh, point. Now, this is important because that's a gameplay mechanic. Anyway, let's go talk to our clerk friends here. Man. Thanks, buddy. Here's your number tag. You'll need it to pick up your jacket. That's very kind of you. Thank right. you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so what else have we got here? Oh, well, we can examine the uh, rags. Huh. I have a question. Please, go ahead. What exactly are you doing? Oh, this? A passenger asked me to dispose of this dirty dress. Oh, how fun. Yeah. It's fun. He says that with some conviction. So, um, that's fine. I can understand a passenger asking him to get rid of the dress. But why is he cutting it up? Surely he could just throw it out in the bin or something. But hey, hey, who am I to judge? Anyway, let's talk to our clerk friend again. By the way, have you seen Harry? Who? Oh, Sorry, Harry is a friend of mine. He's tall, short hair. I didn't see him anywhere at the party. Uh, someone came and left down the hall a moment ago. Maybe it was him. Okay, thanks. It's through that door, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we're going to go look for Harry. Harry's an interesting fellow. I never knew cutting up something could be so much fun, the clerk says. Monica replies, is it really that fun? The clerk comes back with, yes. Didn't you ever try plucking the wings off an insect when you were a child? Monica doesn't know what to say about this. And I kind of agree with Monica. I've never cut uh, the wings off any animal that I can think of. Uh, so, this door took me a while to realize how to actually walk through it. Uh, when I first played this game, this interaction icon didn't show up. Apparently, that's common. So anyway, let's continue and look for Harry. Looks like our clerk friend isn't doing so well. Looks like he's got a worm in his head. That's supposed to be some kind of pus. I don't know. Also, you'll notice we're running at 48 frames a second at 1080p on a 4080. Uh-huh. All right. Anyway, let's continue looking for Harry. There are a few objects that we can interact with here. Monica says, why take a copy of the brochure when I know I'm just going to throw it away? Well, that's very environmentally friendly of you because that's pretty accurate. I had a load of Christians the other day give me a load of brochures. Hey, guess where they went? If you guessed in the bin, you'd be correct. That looks like we've got a couple of individuals up here just chilling, just chatting, you know. Uh, we'll go examine those in a minute. But first, we have a bar. Oh, let's examine the bar, shall we? I don't know. Are they shoes? Are they graphical glitches? We may never know. 
the menu uh, on the table lists various drinks and snacks. Maybe I'll order something later. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. So, we've got some patches. These look like literal rips in the carpet. That makes me question how uh, well maintained the vessel. Anyway, there's another gentleman sitting here. Let's see if we can interact with him. Or we can check this table out. No one is sitting at this table, Monica notices. Well, no shit, Monica. That, that's fairly obvious. Who's this guy? Vigo, hello, young lady. Are you back from the cocktail party? I guess you didn't find your knight in shining armor. Ah. Monica says, yeah, something like that. Are you on vacation with your wife? Vigo comes back with, no, I'm traveling alone. He goes on, let me introduce myself. I am Vigo uh, Bordasov, the owner of this ship. Monica says, wow, you own this ship? He says, yes, it always brings me joy to see passengers such as yourself having a great time on my ship. Monica replies, oh, I guess I'm enjoying myself. Vigo comes back with, ah, don't be afraid to speak out if there's anything we can do to increase your comfort. Well, you could start off my chat by replacing this carpet, you know, a little bit, a little bit shabby if you Anyway, let's continue talking. Vigo says, you wouldn't happen to have a lighter, by the way. He says, he continues, I would like to boil my prosthetic eye to sterilize it. But I seem to have misplaced my lighter. Monica says, sorry, I don't have one at hand. I don't smoke, so. She continues, wait, there might be something at the bar counter that's internalized. Okay. We speak to him again. Repeatedly talking to characters is important. Only there was something to light fire with. Vigo also says, you can select items you find from the inventory in the upper right corner. The cursor will be icon selected item, so click on an object to use the item on it. So this is the tutorial of the game, and as tutorials go, it's all right. To be fair, Monica internalizes. What do you call this again? I use I used this in school ages ago. The beaker, uh, some kind of solid fuel fire underneath. Okay, well let's go examine the bar, shall we? Wherever the bar may be. There we go. Let's go talk to the bartender. He says, "Welcome. Would you like something to drink?" Monica replies, sorry, I think I've had enough for one night. He replies, ha, huh, maybe you're right. Let me know if you'd like some mineral water. Hmm. Okay. Bartender, we don't have many customers tonight. Of course, they're all at the party right now. Monica replies, but you decided to stay open anyway, huh? He replies, well, some of our people fancy, uh, well, some people fancy moving between the watering holes. Especially after a party. He goes on. I expect that they'll make their way over here. Long. Okay. Makes sense. Get anything else out of him? No. All the same. Now it's worth noting as well. If we skip a scene. It's very slow. Now if we examine the bar. Hot towels and matches. On a well pol polished counter. Okay. Well I mean. I, I don't see any hot towels here. I see menus and I see matches. That's that. Don't see any hot towels. Not really sure what she's referring to there. Anyway, let's continue. If only there was something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, dude, we've literally just found matches. There you go, old man. I'm sure you could have done that yourself. That comes to the boil very quickly. Oh, thank you, young lady. You've saved me. Uh-huh. Uh, Vigo's artificial eye is dancing in the beaker. Right? I like the way the sound effects cut in and out. 
Looking closely, it seems as if it's trying to make eye contact with... Yeah, well, you know. I'm sure it's just bouncing around randomly. Okay. We, yep. Move on now, please. Thank you. All right, cool. So, we've examined this place. Let's get out of here. See what else we can find. This is the opposite hallway. Let's go back, see if we can interact with those two people that were standing in the hallway. Maybe they've got some uh, something. Oh, Monica. Monica. Yeah, she's incredibly difficult to control. It's very difficult to get her to go where you actually want her to go. This is a theme. The pair are con uh, conversing rapidly. Whispers. It's hard to make out what they're saying. It could be a foreign language. Okay, well. I guess there's nothing we can do then, then. Yeah. Now, interesting thing about Vigo. He's voiced by the uh, original voice actor for Barry Burton. Interesting. Shame he phoned it in. <laughs> I'd love to know how much they actually paid him for the role. <laughs> anyway, who have we got here? Two ladies. Let's go talk to them. Monica says, here you are. No wonder I didn't see you two at the party. Kelly, Jessica got tired of the party, so I came along with her. Jessica also says, uh, I don't want to get, uh, what's that? I don't get why the best looking guy here is like obsessed with Rooney. What a joke. Monica says, ah, you mean the conductor, Jerome? Kelly replies, yeah, I think that's what his name is. I'm not into slim guys, so. I don't know what she means by that, slim guys. Does she mean she likes tubby guys or muscly guys? Who knows? Yes. Kelly says, Harry was looking for you, by the way. Jessica replies, you should totally date Harry, Monica. Monica continues, are you serious? I don't date guys with no fortune. Kelly then comes back with, but he wanted to talk to you. Uh, about something. You should go look for him on the lower floor. Monica says, I'll consider it. Okay. Get anything else out of these ladies? Harry went to the lower floor. Looking for you. Alright. Well, the lower floor we go then. Hello, creepy old lady who has awfully Terrible lighting. I don't know if that's a bug or by design. I mean, she's having a good conversation with herself. So that's something, I guess. Okay. Oh, I don't actually know how to save this game. That's also worth it. Anyway, let's go see if we can find Harry. Harry, some of you might recognize. And we have a creepy little girl. For reasons. Like our character model was frozen then. That happens. The texture work on these rugs. Jeez. Yeah, they didn't even bother, did they? Well. A little. Second, guys. All right, let's go talk to Harry. Hello, buddy. Now, if you pay special attention to Harry's face, uh, he is Dante. Yes, that Dante from Devil May Cry, from the uh, remake, actually, the, the reboot of young Dante. That is actually his character model, which was sold uh, by Capcom uh, when the game flopped. 
And he's actually appeared in a few different projects all over the world, but strange to find him here. Harry says, hey, there. I see you left the party too, huh? Monica says, yeah. Did you see a little girl come by this way? Harry replies, hmm. It was just me until you came along, babe. Don't say babe, it's so cringe. Harry says, anyway, how's the party? You said you found a guy you like. Monica replies, I thought I did. He was all right, but not my type. He goes on, in the end, I had to let him go. Harry replies, ah, sorry for your loss. Hmm, yeah, if you're <laughs> thinking the same thing I'm thinking, none of these characters are likable, at least so far. Talk to him again. Harry says, seems to me like he was more into Rooney anyway. Well, each to their own right. Personally, she bores the hell out of me. Monica replies, "What? why were you watching me and acting like you didn't know? You're disgusting. Harry comes back with, come on, I was cheering you on from the sideline. I didn't expect plain Jane to hand your ass to you. Ha! <laughs> Monica replies, go to hell. She could have chosen a better knight to stand out for. It's not going particularly well. Also, what is he wearing? Why is he wearing shorts and then like a suit top over? I'm not going to think too much. It's... Don't get yourself worked up now. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> what? You think a soda will get you on my good side? Hey, you're thirsty, right? Here we go. What the... What is it now? Well, uh, something's grabbing my hand. What? I said something inside here is grabbing my hand. Oh, Harry, the Gregory Peck Act is a bit outdated, don't you think? I'm serious! Ah, <laughs> uh, I guess on this ship, the soda machine eats you. And here is our nemesis, the Scissor Walker. Right, well, time to get out of here. Now, Monica isn't that bothered about running for her life, to be fair. I mean, she's making a pretty poor effort of it so far. Now, there is a way of speeding this up, but I clicked over the tutorial like an idiot. That's okay. Now, there is a stamina system. The trouble with the stamina system is um, it wears down the more you run, unlike Clock Tower. have QTEs. Pass? Yes, so. Kind of hard to tell there for a minute. Okay, you success you succeeded in chasing off the scissor walker. Now um, <laughs> unlike in Clock Tower, where if you, uh, you know, mess around for a while, the, um, oh, wow, the pause screen just literally freezes the game. So, unlike in Clock Tower, if you waste too much time, uh, Scissor Man will come back looking for you. That doesn't happen in this game. Once you've evaded the Scissor Walker, 
they're gone until you trigger them to come back, either through story progression or by examining the wrong object. So there's a, there's a big lack of urgency. Now, I don't mind that because the scissor walker is way more dangerous than scissor man ever was. Kills you a lot quicker and is much, much harder to evade because hiding spots aren't illustrated that well. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave this section here. Uh, when we come back, we're going to continue exploring the ship and hopefully we're not going to get horribly murdered too badly. I don't know how to save this game, but I guess, <laughs> I guess we're going to find out. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.